Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Ganesh Taylor, and I'm your host today for this uh, really exciting debate called Technology, Saviour or Threat? So, as the power of tech giants grows ever greater, and science is seen to despoil the planet and use ever greater resources, many are increasingly critical of science. Yet, no one is handing in their technology, me included. Should we stop complaining about big tech and science and recognize uh, and welcome the many improvements to our lives that they have brought? Or are the changes brought about by science and technology profoundly damaging our personal well-being and to the planet? And should we be seeking to rein in their power before it is too late? So joining me uh, to help us tackle and think about these questions, we have a star-spangled uh, series of speakers. Um, first up, we have uh, Tove Bjord, who is uh, the Professor of Philosophy at Oxford University. One of the professors, I should say, rather than the singular professor, unfortunately, maybe. Um, anyway, Toby is the spearhead of both the effective altruism movement and the existential risk space. Uh, his most recent bestseller, The Precipice, combines his expertise on risk, catastrophe, and morality and serves as an existential guidebook to anyone concerned about the impending end of humanity. Uh, fabulous, thank you, Toby. Um, then we also are joined by Fotini Markopoulou, uh, who is an ex-quantum physicist and was leading, uh, was a founding member even uh, of the Perimeter Institute for Theoretical Physics. Uh, she has a PhD in quantum gravity and leaving behind her space-time theories, she's uh, gained an education in design and engineering and now works uh, on building the world's first empathic technology and using complex system science to build new tools for understanding and guiding society. So welcome Fatini. Anna Lemke is one of the first physicians uh, in the US to speak openly about the opioid epidemic. Uh, she has repeatedly worked uh, in cases of federal litigation against Big Pharma, but is perhaps best known to the general public for her appearance in the 2020 Netflix documentary, The Social Dilemma. Her forthcoming book, Dopamine Nation, explores how digital products hijacked our reward pathways and how they undermine our individual agency. Last but by no means least, we are also joined by Dallas Campbell. Dallas is a celebrated science educator who presents some of television's most popular factual shows, including Bang Goes the Theory and The Gadget Show. As an ambassador for STEM education, he has uh, won many plaudits for his services to the public understanding of science, including an honorary fellowship from the British Asso uh, Science Association and honorary life membership for his work at the Royal Institution. He is, of course, also, as we can tell, uh, a proud owner of a spacesuit replica, uh, which has already entertained us all greatly. So having done that uh, introduction, I'm going to invite all of you to answer the question, will technology be our savior or our downfall? And um, just to get us started, Dallas, uh, in no particular order, I'm going to ask you to step in, please. Dallas. It's, it's such savior? a hard, well, this is the thing. It's this, it depends on who I've read or what I've watched at the time. So when I was watching Anna on television, it was like, oh, it's a downfall. And then Toby's much more, oh, it's an up. So it, it, it kind of depends on that. I, th there's that famous Niels Bohr quotation that, um, Prediction is very difficult, especially if it's about the future, which I, I sort of generally uh, subscribe to. See, I wish I was, if I was Elon Musk or if I was Stephen Hawking or something, I could give you the sort of very pessimistic view and tell us we're all going to, um, uh, you know, be taken over by super intelligent machine learning, et cetera, et cetera. I always think that those sorts of headlines, those doom and gloom headlines are the headlines that grabs everyone's attention. Um, but I don't think I am like that. I sort of, I'm, I'm very much of the opinion, I think that the future is going to be what we make of it. Um, there was a, you know, the, the famous Swiss scientist, I think he was Swiss, Conrad Gessner, of course, writing about the latest um, technological handheld device and the always on culture, that culture of being bombarded with information and how that would be the ruination of, uh, of civilization. And of course, Conrad Gessner wrote that, that, that piece in, in the sort of 1500s. And of course he was talking about the printing press. And so one thing we can do if we can't predict the future is look at sort of patterns in the past. And the one thing we do know about the past 
is that the history of science and technology is filled with fear and, and, and premonitions of doom and gloom, um, which never sort of turn out to be quite as, how we expect. I mean, I remember sort of growing up as a kid, um, all the fear was about um, video nasties and computer games would, 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 would ruin our concentration, everything else. And it's never quite as simple as that. So questions like, is it going to be our saviour or is it going to be our downfall? I don't think it's going to be either. I think it's going to be something that we can't even imagine. Um, yes, we are on a, the, the brink of an extraordinary new uh, technological revolution, um, but how it pans out is going to be dependent on what, what we decide to do. And the one thing that we do know is humans are very messy. That's my fence-sitting answer to your question. <laughs> Love it. Yeah, a bit of bit of um, agency on on the behalf of human beings that I call for agency. I like it. Um, Anna, what do you think? Say yeah, you well, uh, I, so uh, a patient of mine, a young man in his early 20s, came in seeking help for debilitating depression and anxiety. He was also playing video, video games most of his waking hours. Um, 20 years ago, I would have prescribed him an, an, an antidepressant first thing. Um, today, um, instead, what I did was recommended to him what I recommend to many of my patients, which is to abstain from screens for an entire month, a dopamine fast. And um, he said, why on earth would I do that? Uh, playing video games is the only thing that gives me any relief from my depression. But what I did was I explained to him how these are really drugs. And when we engage in them, we release a lot of dopamine in our brain's reward pathway. And the way that the brain adapts to that is to immediately downregulate our own dopamine transmission and our own dopamine receptors, essentially putting us into a dopamine deficit state. And if we engage in our drug for many hours every day for long periods of time, we essentially get into a permanent or semi-permanent dopamine deficit state. So I suggested to him that by abstaining, he could reset his dopamine balance. He did it. He came back a month later. He felt better than he had in many years. I see that in my patients a lot. Um, and he was surprised. And the reason that he was surprised is because when we're chasing dopamine, it's really hard to see cause and effect. We really do need to get that distance from it in order to see the true impact on our lives. Um, and the good news is that most of us, after a period of abstaining, can go back to using these drugs in moderation um, as long as we um, keep in mind what it's doing to our brains. So um, my key message here is that the devices themselves are drugs. They're also a conduit to trad traditional drugs that have existed for a millennia. And they also are a conduit to drugs that didn't even exist before texting, tweeting, gaming, gambling, the social media posts, the Washington Post, you name it. So um, I think that we need to be very thoughtful going forward about how we engage with the technology. And there definitely is a dark underbelly uh, that we need to recognize. And I really, really hope that schools and families and parents are educated about this because, um, you know, it's not, you can't just give your kid an iPad and, and walk out the door. Wow. Okay, Anna, that's some powerful stuff. Um, Fatini, as a person who's developing technologies, how do you, how do you come back to that? And how do you feel about the subject of savior or downfall? So before we do the technology, let me clarify, because you uh, also put science in uh, the target in the beginning. And um, so science is just describing how things are. Um, it's a technology that we make out of that uh, where we should be having a discussion, um, not on the science. Uh, and a, a lot of the fear about the science is like when you look at science fiction, it's really technology fiction, right? So mm -hmm. it, it is the technologies that we should be discussing. At a very basic level, uh, like other, the other said, I think it depends what we do with it. So you can, you can take a pencil and you can write a poem and you can poke your eye with it. Um, if you want to think about it in um, its whole context and what it means for us. Uh, basic thing is that humans are the animal that makes tools, that makes technologies. And as we do that, we co-evolve and we change. We have thumbs because we made tools to kill animals. Um, every time that we make tools, we change with them. Um, also, the technologies that we make are not just stuff, we're not just tools. 
they are ways that we design how we interact with each other. So there are physical technologies that are the tools and social technologies, which is how we arrange the societies that we live in. Um, and you might have, uh, I don't know, hunter-gatherer tribes, or you have the Silicon Valley tribe, and they live on top of capitalism and democracy and different systems. And if you are going to be looking at what the effect of technology is, there are all of these different layers of technologies that they interact with each other. And you can't just pick one and say whether that one is good or not. So the, the key thing that is happening now, and that makes those questions super interesting, is that the power of our technologies has hugely increased. It's basically comparable to our own power. And at this point, when you're talking about how we are going to co-evolve with these technologies in the future, there are actually, there are choices, uh, like what Anna was saying, it's important to be aware of what our tools are doing to us, because mm -hmm. that allows you to have some sense of control or thinking about what's happening. But it's also important to keep in mind all the different layers that feed into uh, the technologies that we're making. And a lot of uh, the, the key decisions are actually being made in the technology that moves the money around uh, in the technologies rather than the technology, the, the device itself. Um, so you should consider the feedbacks of the different structures that we are inventing. That's a really cool point. Um, Toby, I actually saw you nodding along, so I, I assume you want to come back to that immediately. But yeah, what, what do you think? Yeah, so uh, will will technology be our savior or our, or our downfall? Um, it's yeah, the, the, it's hard to know how to answer that bit, but I want to address it uh, head on and and take it quite literally. Uh, my work uh, directly concerns the risks of human extinction, uh, including the role that technology plays in that. So uh, the history of humanity, uh, we've been around for about two hundred thousand years. Uh, and over uh, 10,000 generations, we've seen a, uh, a steady and uh, accelerating uh, increase in uh, an escalation of power, uh, power over the world around us, and that this has been fueled uh, largely by technology. Uh, and in the 20th century, this power reached uh, a kind of a new level uh, where it was the first time with the development of nuclear weapons that we had the uh, capacity to destroy ourselves. Uh, and we, we reached this, this point of power uh, before we developed the wisdom uh, to ensure that we don't. Uh, and this, uh, this moment, uh, we, we'd always been subject to risks, uh, natural risks of extinction, such as asteroid impact or something like that. Uh, but that risk is, is actually quite low uh, and can be, can be measured and bounded uh, scientifically from the fossil record. Uh, but for the first time, we'd reached a point where the risks to humanity from within exceeded the risks uh, from the natural world. Uh, and, and ultimately, we need to get out of that situation, um, probably by managing those risks and working out the right ways to do so, uh, or it'll be our downfall. Um, and I would put uh, that the chance in the next 100 years that, that humanity is destroyed by natural risks at about one in 10,000. Uh, whereas uh, my best guess on technological risks is about one in six, uh, much higher. So, so in that sense, technology is, is likely to be our downfall. But if we don't progress in technology, um, then our downfall in the long run is all but assured. Um, we could only go another 10,000 or so centuries before we fall victim to the natural risks. Uh, typical species lasts about a million years. Uh, mm. But the earth will remain habitable for about a billion years and only technology uh, promises a way out to kind of really live up to our potential. Uh, so it's kind of at the heart of whether humanity survives or fails, but it's very much a double-edged sword. And I would, I would echo the other panelists uh, to put agency at the foreground uh, and to say that, that we should focus in some ways less on whether technology is good or bad, uh, and perhaps more on the ways in which it's good and bad and on how we can make it good, how we can make it work for us. Uh, and I would suggest that um, certainly, we can't stop uh, with technology, uh, but we could reinvest uh, more of the gains of technology into responsible steering and stewardship of technology uh, and to have, mm. you know, uh, some fraction of the number of kind of best and brightest people that we see in the space of technology uh, onto the, the area of governance of technology and, uh, uh, and, yeah, making it work for humanity. To continue watching this video, click the link in the top left or in the description below. Or visit iai.tv for more debates and talks from the world's leading thinkers on today's biggest ideas.